Hello, I'm Mark Davis, attorney with Davis and Crump Law Firm. I want to spend a few minutes and talk to you about one of the more significant mass torts, uh, defective drugs and medical device cases ongoing. It's about transvaginal mesh. Uh, transvaginal mesh is a product that is prescribed in women for two conditions. Uh, the first condition is called uh, stress urinary incontinent, SUI. Uh, that's uh, just uh, uh, having uh, the urge to have to go to the bathroom uh, when you don't want to. Uh, any type of activity may cause that to uh, be brought on. The other is prolapse. Uh, as everyone gets older, uh, and particularly in women who have uh, reproductive organ, uh, our organs in our body tend to drop or prolapse. Uh, mesh can be used to lift up those uh, prolapsed uh, organs. Uh, in the SUI, the stress urinary incontinence uh, situations, uh, it's used to lift the bladder. You may have heard some of these procedures uh, being called a bladder lift and some of these devices being referred to as bladder sling. Uh, but it's all talking about the same thing, uh, or, and they're basically products that are used to treat the stress urinary incontinence, uh, typically referred to as sling, and those that are uh, used to treat the prolap, which are typically just referred to as mesh. Mesh uh, and slings uh, that are used for these conditions trace their history back to the late 1990s when they were first introduced on the market by two manufacturers, Ethicon, which is uh, owned by Johnson & Johnson and another company called American Medical System. Uh, before the late 90s, uh, mesh was mostly used for hernia repair, uh, which is uh, mesh used through an abdominal incision. Uh, in the late 90s, uh, Ethicon and AMS uh, began uh, marketing product taking the same polypropylene based mesh used for hernia repair uh, and promoting it for use in repair of uh, SUI and prolap through a uh, that would be implanted vaginally which is a totally different uh, method of operation than uh, the hernia repair which is being done through an abdominal incision. Uh, so by doing this, uh, these manufacturers were able to get around some of the FD, FDA requirements on the, the products being tested uh, because they had already been used, at least in uh, uh, hernia repairs, prior to the late 1990. Um, there are now tens of thousands of cases that have been filed in both state and federal court uh, across the United States. In federal court, uh, all of the cases have been consolidated for discovery purposes only uh, in front of a judge in West Virginia. Uh, some cases have settled, uh, many more are set for trial in the upcoming months and years. Uh, and we anticipate further cases uh, will go to trial and also be settled in the upcoming months and years. Um, if, if you uh, are a woman who has been injured by a mesh type product uh, or you know a loved one uh, or a relative uh, that has been injured by a mesh type product, uh, give our office a call. Uh, we will uh, talk to you about the particular types of products you have uh, and if you have one of the products that's involved in the litigation, uh, we'll make a claim on your behalf. Uh, you can reach us by the toll-free number that you see on the bottom of the screen or uh, you can email us at info at daviscrump.com. Um, some of the injuries that you may have experienced might include things such as infection, uh, pain, uh, mesh products are known to uh, erode. Uh, many women have undergone subsequent procedures either to have the mesh product cut because it was in there too tight uh, uh, 
uh, or have had to have the product removed either in the doctor's office or under a general anesthesia at a local hospital. Uh, it can cause uh, bleeding, it can cause scar tissue, uh, it can cause painful sex. Uh, these are all injuries related to mesh type products. Again, if you've had one of these problems, uh, give us a call uh, or send us an email and we'll contact you regarding a claim. I know we can help. Legal Briefs was brought to you by Davis and Crump. Fighting for you is what we do.